a consciousness field. It's not just consciousness is not just something in the mind. It's actually the energy that goes into making matter. You know, we, we have a, a ridiculous scientific belief right now that everything in the universe was created in one explosion at the beginning of time. Sure. And that ever since then, it's a static universe and it's just expanding. But everything was created. Well, it's really preposterous, and there's even things that we can talk about, like expanding Earth theory, where if you look at all the continents on the Earth, you can shrink the Earth to 55% of its current size just by removing the oceans. And all the continents fit together like a perfect little jigsaw puzzle. And there's uh, Neil Adams, a famous comic book artist, who's got a website, neiladams.com. That's N-E-I-L. A-D-A-M-S, and you can look on his website, and he's done movies where he shows not only the Earth expanding, but the moon and Mars. Now, let's just talk about that one anomaly for a second, okay? Because if that is true, and, and you can look and see the proof yourself, where the cracks line up perfectly as you shrink things down. Sure. That proves right off the bat that physical matter can be created from apparently nothing. Because we can't see or measure any apparent energy source flowing into these planets that would be sufficient to cause them to have such massive increases in their physical size. Hmm. So that actually is a proof that establishes a base reality that we can work off of, which is that matter as we know it has to be drawing off of some hidden energy source in order to sustain itself. Mm -hmm. And the Earth is a perfect example. We, we have been led to believe, without question, that the interior of the Earth is made of iron. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only reason why they say that, basically speaking, is because iron conducts magnetic fields. And exactly. we think, well, the Earth has a magnetic field, therefore it's got to have an iron core, period. Yeah. There's actually plenty of evidence to show, especially from Russia. Uh, in Russia, they call them vacuum domains or uh, natural self-luminous formations. A lot of people might call them UFOs without realizing that in some cases, when you see these balls of light, it's just another natural physical phenomenon that our scientists don't really acknowledge. But you have these balls of light that have very strong magnetic fields and they can be attracted to or reflected from other magnetic forces, as well as having a whole bunch of other strange properties, including things like anti-gravity and uh, even consciousness. They seem to respond to people's thoughts. Um, so this is what's really powering the Earth's magnetic field, and it's also these balls of light that are kind of a much larger form of what's inside the atom, really. as a result of an etheric energy flow, where ether is a good name for this hidden energy. You can call it hyperdimensional energy or whatever, the Russians call it torsion fields, mm -hmm. but etheric is a, is a classic word, so we'll, we'll stick with that for now. So there's an etheric energy that flows in to make matter what it is. Uh, in mainstream science, you can find plenty of documentation when you look for things like dark matter, dark energy, zero-point energy, quantum field, quantum fluctuations, quantum vacuum, etc., etc. Uh, virtual photons, another one. Anyway, you're dealing with an etheric energy flowing into the Earth. An etheric energy flowing into the Earth. Create, create, and then, and some, then of some of it also flows back and back out. 